Nickelodeon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Double Team. Late one night, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were in their lair. Their teacher, Splinter, led them in a practice drill. Are you fighting in slow motion? Raphael teased Leonardo. I could go faster if I ignored my form like you, Leo replied. Ignore this form! With that, Raph attacked Leo, and they continued sparring. Splinter grabbed the two turtles, stopping their fight. You must learn to work together, he said. Spar two on two against Donatello and Michelangelo. Is that fair? asked Raphael. We're way better. Mikey scoffed. If fighting, maybe. That's what I meant, Raph said. Splinter signaled them to begin. Mikey and Donnie were on the floor in seconds. You were right, Sensei, said Raphael. Working together is fun. Mikey and Donnie were depressed. Look, guys, Leo said. Raph and I are better fighters, but you are still important to this team. You two think of us as some kind of B team, Mikey said. April came into the lair, looking upset. What's wrong? asked Donnie. Some guys from the Purple Dragons mugged me, April said. The Purple Dragons were a dangerous street gang. They took my phone. The Turtles wanted to get April's phone back, but Splinter urged them to stay put. Every fight is a risk, he said. You don't know where it will lead. The Turtles went anyway. We'll be careful, Leo promised as they ran out of the lair. The turtles found Fong, Sid, and Choi, members of the Purple Dragons, in their hideout. Yuck! Raphael kicked Sid in the chest. Fong and Choi tried to fight back, but Leo and Raph shut down their every move. Mikey and Donnie couldn't even get one hit in. We want our friend's phone back, Leo said. The defeated dragons showed the turtles their back room. It was full of stolen phones and other gadgets. Donnie pointed to a red phone with a charm on it. That looks like April's, he said. Before the turtles could leave with the phone, the room started to shake. Dozens of tiny robots burst through a crack in the floor. Each one grabbed a piece of loot and headed back down. They're stealing the stuff we stole, Sid cried. Fong grabbed April's phone and jumped out the window. B-Team, get him, Leo commanded. Mikey and Donnie were offended, but they followed Fong out the window. Raph taunted them as they left. Don't be afraid to call for help. Raph and Leo smashed tiny robot after tiny robot, but many more escaped through a hole in the floor. Let's see where these things are coming from. Leo said, and the two turtles jumped into the hole. Sid and Choi followed them. Raph and Leo trailed the tiny robots to another building. Raph nodded at Leo, and they dropped through a skylight, landing in front of the robot's master. Dexter Spackman, Raphael said. It's Baxter Stockman! Baxter Stockman corrected him. And you can't stop me! These robots are going to make me very rich. I call them Mousers, he added. Just when Raphael and Leonardo were about to attack, Baxter sprayed them with a red mist. Protect your eyes, Leo cried. The two turtles coughed and sputtered, but quickly realized they were fine. Leo and Leo and Raph destroyed all the attacking mousers one by one, but then a metal door slid open. Good. Leo and Raph destroyed all the attacking mousers one by one, but then a metal door slid open. Good thing I made extra, Baxter cackled. 
Leo destroyed all the attacking mousers one by one. But then a metal door slid open. Good thing I made extra, Baxter cackled. Leo and Raph fled from Baxter's lab with hundreds of mousers chasing them. Baxter was about to celebrate his victory when Sid and Choi jumped out of the shadows and snatched him. Leonardo and Raphael ran all around the city, scaling rooftops and jumping alleys. The Mousers never lost their trail. It must be that stuff he sprayed on us, Raph said, leaping over a fence. Donnie would know what to do, Leo said. But after all the teasing he and Raph had done, they were too proud to call their brother for help. The Mousers kept coming, and Leo and Raph kept fighting back. I've got an idea, Raph said. The turtles perched on a street lamp and waited, while the mousers crowded around below. When some of them started chewing through the street lamp, Leo hopped down to a fire hydrant and opened it. Water sprayed everywhere. The chewed through street lamp came crashing down, zapping all the mousers. But just when Leo and Raph thought they were safe, a new bunch of mousers turned the corner and came after them. Okay, let's call Donnie. Raph said. Meanwhile, Donatello and Michelangelo were following Fong to a new hideout. They watched Fong bring April's phone to Dog Pound, one of the turtles' worst enemies. The turtles want this phone, Fong told him. Dog Pound tapped the screen a few times. It's locked. Suddenly, Sid and Choi entered, dragging Baxter into the hideout. Baxter's hands were tied with rope. This guy used robots to steal from us, Sid said. I don't have time for this, Dog Pound said. I have to find the turtles. Turtles? Baxter cried. I hate those guys. My mousers are already destroying two of them. Dog Pound raised his giant paw and brought it down hard, slashing the ropes on Baxter's hands with his claw. Dog Pound handed Baxter the phone. If you make robots, you must be good with electronics, he said. Hack into this. On the roof, Donatello and Michelangelo began hatching their plan. We can't fight Dog Pound on our own, Mikey said. You're right. Donnie said. We'll cut the power and snatch the phone instead. Operation Blackout, Mikey exclaimed. He loved to name things. Just as Baxter was about to unlock April's phone, everything went dark. Something grabbed the phone. Sid, Choi, and Baxter were confused, but Dog Pound pounced. When the power came back on, he had Mikey and Donnie pinned to the floor. Dog Pound chained Donnie and Mikey to the wall. Meanwhile, Baxter kept trying to unlock April's phone. You're wasting your time, Donnie said. It has GPS on it, Baxter said. We can see everywhere it's been. The turtles gasped. If Dog Pound could see where their lair was, he could get Splinter. Donnie's T-phone started to ring. Leo and Raph were finally calling for help, but it was too late. Dog Pound grabbed Donnie's phone and Mikey's, too. We'll check these next, he said. T-phone self-destruct, Donnie cried. Pop, hiss. The little phones sputtered and sparked in Dog Pound's giant paws. Suddenly, Raph and Leo burst through a window. Not so fast, Leo called. How did you escape my mousers? Baxter asked. We didn't, Raph said, as mousers started pouring through a hole in the wall. While Dog Pound was distracted by the mousers, the purple dragons ran away. Leo grabbed April's phone. Raph freed Mikey and Donnie. We're here to save the day again, Raph teased. Looks like you were doing great, Donnie said, nodding at the mousers.
The turtles passed April's phone back and forth to keep it from Dog Pound while trying to fend off the attacking mousers. Baxter sprayed us with something, Leo told Donnie. Now these things won't leave us alone. Donnie picked up a smashed mouser and looked at its insides. A gamma camera, he cried. They must have sprayed you with radioisotopes. You can't get them off, but they will weaken with time. If someone else gets sprayed, though, the new signal will be stronger and attract all the mousers. Dog Pound finally fought his way through the mousers and charged at the turtles. Mikey and Donnie took him on while Leo and Raph smashed the attacking mousers. We need Baxter's spray, Donnie said as he blocked a strike from Dog Pound. You mean that? Mikey asked, pointing at Baxter. Baxter stood next to Dog Pound, aiming a huge red spray bottle at Mikey and Donnie. Michelangelo flung a ninja star at Baxter's bottle. Red spray exploded all over Baxter and Dog Pound. The mousers paused. They turned their little robot heads toward Dog Pound and Baxter, sensing the new signal. Dog Pound and Baxter screamed and took off. Dog Pound snatched April's phone on his way out. Donatello acted fast. He activated his blade and threw his staff, stabbing April's phone against the floor. It smashed to pieces. Baxter and Dog Pound ran into the night, an army of attacking mousers right behind them. Back at the lair, the turtles celebrated their victory. Nice job, guys, Leo said. From now on, you're the A- team. Raph said. Well, I guess that's as good as it's going to get, said Donnie. But Splinter was not pleased. You chose your battle poorly and made your own problems, he said. We learned our lesson, Leo said. And we did get April's phone back. You did? April asked. Leo handed April her phone. What was left of it? You can have one of my custom tea phones, Donnie offered. Neat! April clutched the new phone. Just don't say, tea phone self-destruct, Mikey warned. Pop! Hiss!